Hi there, my name is Clea Schaefer, and I am doing my project on minor league baseball. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the economics of minor league baseball, and I'm going to answer the question of does the presence of a minor league baseball team help or hurt a community economically? So let's get started here. So before I start, just a quick little fun fact, did you know, little segment to start us off. Did you know that actor Bill Murray owns one of the independent minor league baseball teams in St. Paul, Minnesota? He actually owns this team and does a whole bunch of fun, crazy antics along with owning the team. As you can see on the right, there is a little pig and they call him Little Red Porkette. And so it's kind of funny during the games, they do a whole segment around that and they do a lot of other things like run up and down the stands in costumes and just weird stuff like nuns giving a back rub and they have a hot tub, just weird stuff. So there's your little fun fact out of my presentation. So I'm going to move it right along. So the background. So when I started looking at this project, this is kind of what I was looking to do. So in this analysis, I will be looking at the sports industry. The time period that I have chose to look into is the present time period, 2010 till around the current time. Specifically, I want to analyze minor league baseball because I love baseball so much and I really love the um, minor league aspect. And another reason that I decided to do my project on this is because I've had a lot of experience working around minor league baseball. Um, and so I'm going to and just talk a little bit about um, what I've experienced. So um, I worked for a team in Wilmer, Minnesota. They actually weren't a minor league, but they were run exactly like a minor league. They're a Northwoods League collegiate league team. So these are the people that are still in college that are looking to get drafted. Um, but all of the in-between inning fun stuff and how they market and sell their tickets, it's all the same as what a normal minor league baseball team would do. So, uh, my thesis is a minor league baseball team will have a definite impact on a community if established because of the effects on income and community development. Minor league baseball teams should be implemented in more cities in order to build the community's economy. So, I really do believe that they have a positive impact, but I'm going to look a little bit further into it through this analysis. So as I go through here, I have three main points of discussion that I want to go through. The first being the increase in demand of the increase in demand for attendance. So I'm going to look a little bit closer at um, the past few years, some statistics on how the um, ticket sales have increased and how many people are actually going to games. Secondly, I'm going to look at whether or not minor league baseball is a substitute good or a complementary good, which you can see it from two different angles. So I'm going to kind of discuss that a little bit as well. Lastly, I'm going to get a little bit deeper into the overall impact of the team on community income and some of the things that the team um, will do for the economy of that community. So let's get started here. I'd like you to look at this map and look over at all of these teams. And if you notice, these are the average attendance for the top 122 drawing teams. So you can see that there are quite a few that make it out to minor league baseball games during the year. And this is only a small chunk of how many actually show up. So if you look, over 9,000 per game, that is a huge number for a minor league baseball team. And also down at the bottom, um, next to Mexico at the bottom, Mexican League, there is a um, green logo and that belongs to a team that actually isn't a minor league. It's in the same league that I had worked in um, for a collegiate uh, baseball team. And they actually draw that amount of fans every game. And that is just crazy. So um, just to get an idea of how many people actually attend these games is a great way to kind of see um, what's being demanded. I also want you to look at this. I know that my sources or my thesis said that I wanted to look from 2010 until now, but this gives a really great um, showing of how 
the increase in attendance changes over the course of the year. So we look at 2008 and that they're comparing that to the year before. And so you can see that um, it's gone up in each different league. And I mean, some have gone down a little bit, but for the most part, there's an increase and overall there's an increase. So as you can see, it's just becoming more and more popular. So the demand for that is um, getting pretty high. So why is there an increase in demand? Well, first of all, let's look into what demand really is. So if we look at the definition from Farnham, um, demand is the functional relationship between the price of a good or service and the quantity demanded by consumers in a given time period. So what is the demand for minor league baseball? Um, and why is there an increase in demand? So why there is an increase is because more than likely a minor league baseball game is going to be cheaper. You look at ticket prices, they range, you know, maybe from five to fifteen dollars, whereas a minor or a major league baseball game is going to be quite a bit more expensive. Also, if you go to a minor league baseball game, you're going to be able to sit in a lower section for cheaper, and maybe you get to see those up and coming players that you wouldn't be able to um, at a major league game because they're so expensive. Also, if you go to a minor league baseball game, there's more entertainment, there's more in-between inning fun games that they do. And also another cool thing is that um, a lot of minor league baseball teams are affiliated with a major league team. So it's like you're seeing a smaller version of the major league team and it's still just as fun and you can still be a fan. Um, it's, it's just a really great experience. So that's why a lot of people tend to go to those games too is because they are related to like the Minnesota Twins or um, the Chicago White Sox or whoever. So, and then the last thing, um, they're probably the, the proximity to the ballpark as well. So say you're going two hours to go to a Twins game or three hours, whereas a minor league baseball team is maybe only, you know, a half hour to an hour from your house. More people are maybe going to want to spend less and drive less and go to the minor league game just because everything is a little bit cheaper. So moving right along, that brings me to my second point. Is it a substitute or complementary good? So I kind of wrestled with this a little bit because it can be either or depending on how you look at it. So the information that I found in my resources said that it was more of a substitute good. And the reason that it's a substitute good is that it can be interchangeable. So like I said before, a major league baseball game is gonna be more expensive for people. So instead of going to a major league game and spending all that money, we'll save a little money and we'll go to a minor league baseball game instead. So um, we're gonna look at the definition of what a substitute good is again. And that is a product or service um, that can be substituted if one is used in the place of the other. So in the example that Farnham describes is the cell phones compared to the wristwatches. So when um, cell phones, electronics, like laptops and things like that started coming around, teens and young adults were more likely to buy a cell phone rather than a wristwatch. So that was kind of a substitute good. So you can kind of see how a minor league baseball game would be a substitute good for some people. And then, but on the other hand, I can see it as a complimentary, especially if it's an affiliated baseball team, like with the Minnesota Twins. It could be an add-on since maybe the Twins are doing really good and being a baseball fan, you might want to go see a minor league team. So I can see it from that way too, but more than likely it's going to be a substitute good just because of the pricing. So that's what um, substitute good would be compared to minor league baseball. I think that's the best choice, um, but you can definitely see a reason for complimentary. So lastly, I'm going to talk about the overall impact on community income, and I'm going to start out with employment. So if a new baseball team comes to town like a minor league, it automatically will draw um, 
more jobs. So, I mean, baseball teams, they need a lot of workers. And so automatically there's going to be a rise in employment. And I was reading into this quite a bit because I think this is really interesting. Um, I found an article that is by Nola Aga. I believe that's how you say that name. And it was an article called A Compensating Difference Approach to the Benefit of Minor League Baseball. And in this, it talked about two different ways that minor league baseball can have an impact on community. So there are two opposing views. The first one is that minor league baseball is a small, insignificant game played in front of small crowds, small venues, small cities, no television exposure, no overflow crowds, no superstars or super salaries. It has little ability to generate intangible benefits for a local community. So pretty bad, right? It says pretty much that they don't do anything for the community. But then on the other hand, the other view focuses on relative worth of a team as a local sports team is viewed as a unique geographic and culture, cultural attribute that outsiders associate with the city. So like, for example, I went to, or I worked for the Wilmer Stingers, and I would say, oh, I'm, I worked in Wilmer, and they would say, oh, the Wilmer Stingers. So they know who they are, and that has worth to them. So that's already a benefit of the city. If there is pride, if there is local pride, the benefits are valuable. So also this depends on the size of the city. I won't get um, too deep in that, but um, along with the size of the city, the article also goes on to talk a little bit about how many people move into the city um, with a minor league baseball. So according to data from the primary metropolitan statistical areas, from the American Housing Survey conducted by the Bureau of the Census, that's a big group of words, the results indicated that affiliated minor league teams in mid-sized markets, they tend to... Um, to have like 0.4 to 1.4 million people, they show a 6 to 8% increase in rent. So it looks like um, more people are renting out housing in that community. Um, so it shows kind of a, it shows a positive impact that more people are moving in because there's more things to do and they have a team to follow. So you can see um, that it really does have a good impact. And the article also says that you can see similar gains in major league markets. So, and I just wanted to touch a little bit on the minor league, or the independent minor leagues. And I talked a little bit about that um, uh, when I talked about the Saints, but they, those type of teams, they don't, they aren't affiliated with a major league team. So they're more unstable and they don't have enough funding because they're not getting that funding from the bigger team. So they didn't really see an improvement having those teams in a city. So like the Sioux Falls Canaries or like the St. Paul Saints. I mean, they really do have a fan base, but not as big as, you know, another one. Um, but then I wanted to get on to the New Britain Rock Cats. You can see that on the side. And they are planning to expand more in their... Um, uh, business and they're looking to get more corporate business and um, more money flow and basing their, their um, marketing more on a bigger fan base. So they are a triple A or a double A affiliate of the Minnesota Twins and as they are getting bigger and moving to a new city it really does show that they are um, bringing more to the city and there's more cash flow, so it's going to improve everything around them. And um, the article that I was looking at, it said that the amount of money will be flowing significantly. So as they're moving to Hartford, they will be focusing more on corporate sponsorships and they'll be more family-based. So that was kind of my example for that. But you can see that these minor league baseball teams really are taking off and they are making a positive impact on the community. So whether it be, you know, um, employment-wise or increase in business with their corporate sponsors and things of that nature, you can really see that they're doing a great number of good. So just wanted to close and um, just say that I really enjoyed doing this project because it showed that what I love so much really 
um, is helping communities. And for that, I hope you go check out a minor league baseball game.